Hello, Internet, and welcome back to the ninth Japanese learning log. It's kind of cool that we're on nine already. It's October. Time's going by fast. But uh, my name is Mark, if you don't know me already. And in June of 2021, so about four and a bit months ago, I started learning Japanese relatively seriously. And all in all, today's kind of theme is me finding the groove, if you will, me getting into a rhythm that works for me. I've really been embodying my idea of, you know, take what works and keep it and throw away what doesn't. But the problem is with some systems, I feel like I already have things that work. And with some like Japanese, I feel like I don't have things that work. And so the time to find these things is tedious. And I suppose the three months of the summer was very helpful. Uh, in terms of fully getting started, but I feel like I've gotten a lot closer to something that really works for me. So uh, I was going to start sa with saying something in Japanese, but I'm not, not yet. I can put together like small fragment sentences with the basic grammar that I know, but I'm still very conscious about like accent and properly forming stuff. I'm going to try not to look like this because the green anyway. So yeah, today will be a lot about me getting in the groove of using various learning methods and what I did to get over these, these humps. That's immediately the introduction. You can check out the other learning logs up in the corner here if you don't know what's going on. But hopefully you can glean something from this. If you're doing your own language journey on your own, leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear how it's going. But without further ado, let's jump into methodology. <laughs> so this is just where I discuss what I've been studying and how I have specifically been studying it. The last learning log was, I don't actually remember what my goals were for it. <laughs> but one big thing is that I had Tay Kim's grammar guide on my Kindle, the digital PDF version, because I, don't know, I didn't want to keep using my laptop, but for many reasons, one just being textbooks in general are hard to work with on a Kindle. Um, Take Kim's grammar guide is really hard to work with on a Kindle. So I got it in the physical version. It was like $20 on Amazon. Um, and I know book fees are a thing. Uh, and so, you know, you probably made like $2 off of this. Um, so I do want to actually donate to the site once I get more through it, just as a, a weird like reward for myself, even though I'm not, even though I'm losing my, I, it's weird. I don't want to explain that psychology of that or what I think it is right now. But anyway, I got the physical version. I haven't taken actual notes in ages. So what I'm doing is first off, I have three color highlighters. I only like to highlight with two. I don't even like to highlight in the first place, honestly, but I'm like forcing myself to do it because maybe this will help. And again, you know, try things. And if this doesn't work, then it doesn't work. But so far we're doing all right. Anyway, dedicated written notebook. Um, and effectively I'm writing in black and red. So, Black is just general and then red is like the main highlight for points. And then I put references back in the textbook. Future Mark, if you would be so kind, do some B-roll of that maybe. Um, it's been very slow, which I will talk about in reflections, but that's been, you know, my grammar, my grammar guide, literally. Um, and it's been very important because I think, you know, I've said before, I think the grammar is important. Um, but my main thing is the linguistic focus of things. Looks like Tay Kim gets a lot more into that idea later on. So anyway, uh, the other methodology uh, that I've been doing is Wani Kani and sort of Boon Pro. So, all right, so to make my life easier, we're gonna skip to this camera uh, in the front. Uh, this is Wani Kani. This is thing one that I've been doing. And this has been a super helpful website because it pushes you, it tells you what to do and when to do it. So you've got reviews. Uh, if I refresh, I should actually have more available. Yeah. So we've got 30 reviews, um, start session. I'm going to, so this is one from a while ago, finish, uh, tsunami. I'm so mad that that's not, you know, better yet. Um, kanji has multiple readings for each one. Is it show? I don't think so. Shoujo. Yeah, it is. Okay, sweet. Um, sagiru, sagaru, oh, whoops. Uh, to be lowered, to get lower, frick. Some of the reflexive really mess with me. Anyway, that's uh, that. Uh, and I do that two to three times a day, at least, uh, you know, if not four. What's really cool is as you finish the radicals, the relevant kanji become available. And then as you finish the kanji, the relevant vocab become available. And as soon as you get all the kanji, uh, successfully done five times. So like I have for mix down here, you know, one of 39 kanji pass and the level changes when you progress through kanji. So the idea that I want to get used to, and my last goal was to get to level six and clearly I'm not there. And I definitely want to do like one level a week, like go, 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 go. So what I was originally doing is doing enough kanji to get vocab and then, you know, finesse those, do the rest of the kanji, do more vocab. But what I should be doing is get all the kanji as quick as possible with vocab and whatever aside. And then, you know, technically all the vocab will carry over. So while I do level six kanji, I'll be doing level five vocab. If you do it often enough and at the right times, the radicals can be done in two days. I think I got to level five like three days ago. 
How people are doing them in six days, I'm not yet sure, but excited to find out all in all. <laughs> it's just a great system because it, it's a long, like I know kanji is a long-term game and I love being able to sit down and just having the reviews ready. That's such, what's so great about Anki and whatever. But Wanikani has a whole paced out system for all the kanji in general. Well, by all the kanji, I mean all the ones I'll ever need. That is methodology one and methodology two is Boon Pro. Now, one of my goals last week was uh, to maintain a streak, right? But the problem was I was doing the Boon Pro reviews like way on N5 pace slash way out there, just too fast in general. So when I got to reviews, I wasn't getting much use out of them because I found it was becoming just rote memorization. So I haven't touched it. Yesterday, what I did was I reset a bunch of the grammar points I had been working on so that it's up to pace where I am at, in the grammar book. Now, I have gotten through very little of the grammar book relatively. It's been like every few days, like do a couple pages pretty much. But so yeah, so it's all the way up to transitive and intransitive verbs. And then, yeah, so this is the full kind of chapter. And these are the only ones on Boom Pro I've been kind of doing. Now I haven't done these, but the, my point is something I realized about four or five days ago. And this is why the theme, actually we're gonna switch back. So this is why the theme of the video is this finding your groove type of thing. Oh, it was only four or five days ago that I realized realized I'm going through the textbook too slowly. Um, you know, Boon Pro is not, I'm not getting out of it what I think I should be getting out of it. Uh, Wani Khan is the only thing that's working right now simply because it's paced by itself. And I'm learning vocab, which is always my most dreaded part of language learning, but it's 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 happening. So keep on Wani khan -ing. And then I just paid for Boon Pro a few days ago when I set this all up. And something was happening with my billing, which is part of the reason why I stopped like using it. But anyway, so we have reviews ready. Let me skip right back to the reviews really quick. Uh, this can also be interpreted as, do you like me? Daisuki, Dai, Daisuki, Da, uh, Suki. Okay, not too familiar with what is happening right here. Let's try a different one. Inanimate objects, frick, what a shame, Garu. Yeah, okay. Been a while since I've done Boom Pro. I also switched it to light theme because dark theme was slightly weird. Um, but anyway, so we're back to camera now. God, I've been talking about methodology for a while, but hey, that's the whole point, right? So Boon Pro, I'm hoping will work just as Wani Kani is working. In other words, I'll be doing it two or three times a day with Wani Kani because what I found is, let's take a look at my calendar really quick. Okay, I'm not gonna move this, mark in the future, blur what you need to blur. I'm gonna go back a week in just a second. <laughs> So you see that there are active Japanese study blocks here and here. So the teal stuff, cool. This is when they're supposed to be, more or less. But sometimes it ends up being me sitting down for Wanikani, only doing a few pages of the textbook, whatever. I like this system, however. In the video I just released over here, uh, like two days ago as of this video uploading, actually it was yesterday as of this video uploading, These Japanese is a commitment. So I do it during these times where, I don't know, I'm not gonna try and explain that, but it's a commitment. And I think this is working for me so far. I just have to really dig into the schedule and focus myself on doing some textbook pages. So yeah, and then some other goals that I mentioned in the last learning log were reading IQ, which I'm using for my camera. Oh, this is actually a good level. Never mind. Okay, so IQ, uh, barely read any of it. I, I just get so intimidated by going through. Um, but I think it's good to just like look at it and see what of the what essential grammar I recognize. Because again, it's the same thing with kanji. Kanji went from recognition to remembering the meaning to remembering the different pronunciations and using those in various contexts. I, I still feel like there's a pattern to the pronunciations and there sort of is, but sometimes it's like, oh, this uses the Jugoku reading or whatever. This is Jugoku, it uses the Kunyomi reading. Sorry, I messed that up. You know, today I was at archery and there was this, this bow stand and it had four kanji on it. First one I didn't recognize, but the second one was, I forget the exact order, but it was water, fire, mountain. And I just, I didn't know what that meant. <laughs> like, was that a brand? Cause I know you, you know, sometimes kanji are used simply for the pronunciation. So was it like Kazan? was I think volcano in general, San is mountain. So like maybe it was Hisan and then Sui Hisan, but I don't, you know, that doesn't ring a bell for archery brands in my mind, but maybe one day I'll come back to it. Same thing here. Mark adds just a few pictures of the manga, I guess. He, that's the, you know, kanji for San Amon. I don't know what page, are there page numbers? It's, it's this page, I guess. Oh look, Hinata, okay. So Hinata's name is San Nata, which I think is a kanji I'm gonna learn soon. Uh, Shoyo which is his last name slash surname, uh, or perhaps it's his first name. Japanese is backwards. Three Nen, San Nen. But yeah, so going through just like I just did, I need to actually do that during my active Japanese study session. Right now I'm very caught in the view that I have to, you know, textbook stuff, but that that should be part of it because that's good. Those few things, and then I found one paper. Uh, I've really been slacking on finding the papers. Reflections is gonna be really fun, by the way. I've made a lot of cool observations this past month.
one of my classes is called linguistics as a cognitive science and we bring up a lot of cool things so yeah that's my methodology wani kani i didn't really do it but now i will be doing boon pro daily with wani kani uh japanese textbook and going through manga during my active japanese study blocks and then i haven't watched much tv at all lately just in general, but I started watching Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, which is my current target goal. I don't think I watched like one show in total, at least not a Japanese one, which is, you know, it's great that I'm not watching TV, but you know, I should, oh, I've been listening to a lot of, okay, you know what, good segue, reflection. So this is any observations uh, or things that pertain to past goals that I have noticed. So overall it's a very slow month, as I'm sure you can imagine. Um, However, there have been times where I can kind of put together some basic sentences. I, I think in my head, like, okay, how would, you know, I was talking with a friend and I was like, oh, my name would be Maku. And I'd be like, Maku desu is Mark. And then the suffix that is I am. And she was like, oh, what would my name be? And so I guess, and I just said like Mato and Matt, right? So Mato. But so I was, okay, you know, I'm just gonna go in the whole story. So I was, I switched my phone to Google Maps. Let's see. You can peel the image right from the screen, Mark. Google Maps changes all of the street names and stuff to uh, katakana, which is great katakana practice. Wandikani is great hiragana practice, but this is great katakana practice practice because I'll be on the subway and I'll be thinking, okay, atoran teishiku. But sometimes it's like, I was talking with my friend and I was like, oh, like, look at this one. You have to, when you sound it out, you can kind of get the English word. So, korombia. Coronbia, it's Columbia Street or whatever. Like that was the main one that we were talking about, or at least that I mentioned. So I'll be like in the subway, like, okay, I have four stops, but you know, let me count this out. And I'll be like, Coronbusu. Oh, Columbus, like, cool. I don't know, really fun uh, and makes me, and then also on, I guess this image is a good example. There's a question here that's usually, and I just remember this from using Google Maps. Normally it's usually like, how is it in your subway car? Uh, and these first two are, the first one is car, which is Shia or Kuruma. Kuruma is the vocab pronunciation. Anyway, next one is within. So nai or uchi. Uh, again, depending on what you, I think it's nai. But so I think this is shia nai or perhaps it's kuruma nai, but that doesn't sound right. I don't actually know. But, and then there's wa, the particle. So as for in the car, dono yo na, I, I don't know what any of the rest means. Deska. So deska is, is it something? So within the car, something, something is it. And then like I have 50% of it. And so I imagine that's like temperature, humidity, whatever. That was, that's been super fun because it's, it's such a passive way of being like, Hey, my, my learning is paying off. Talked about lack of anime. I was going to segue into music, but it was my fourth bullet point. Uh, been listening to a lot of music. I found Millet, Millet. It's pronounced in, or it's spelt in English. Even though I have my phone in Japanese, like Takayan is switched to uh, Hiragana when I switched my phone to Japanese. But, but yeah, I've been listening to a lot of those and Malay has a lot of bilingual songs and some of it's in English, some of it's in Japanese. And it's been super cool to like realize that, you know, if it switches to English, my brain will, will immediately be like, this is English. Cause I'll just understand it. But when it's Japanese, there's like a fraction of a second where it's like, oh, I don't know that word in English. And then I'm like, oh, it's Japanese. Um, and I've, I'm able to like identify some words here and there, like I'll hear wa or I'll hear anata, I'll hear uh, ka, I'll hear kata, data. You know, so the things I'm learning and I'm hearing them slowly and slowly. But that is one thing I'm scared about with Wani Kani is that I kind of wish it pronounced each kanji like as you went. And you can look at the pronunciation, so I should be more mindful about that. But yeah, talked about my manga and lack of reading it really, lack of anime. In terms of Wani Kani, the mnemonics disappear very quickly. I think what took me so long to get through level four was my lack of care for the mnemonics when it came to vocab because I wanted to try and rush it. But you really need them. <laughs> you really need them because they drill in. When you when you get to, I'll use one from a screenshot here, tanin, which is other and then uh, person. You, you have to use some mnemonic, especially to remember the sound. So other person is tanin, but other can also be pronounced uh, hoka. So, you know, knowing it's tanin, you know, a person eating tacos and they're the other person sitting outside the group. Oftentimes I'll come up with my own mnemonics that aren't related to Wani Kani. They have a little, some weird things. It's kind of just like the sun god Ra, Takara, and I don't know. Was, I like making it my own. It's good, I'm good at it, I think. So yeah, you, you know, you have to stick with these, but they do disappear relatively quickly. Oftentimes I'll see one and immediately remember the meaning, or in the better case, I will see one and immediately remember what it sounds like. 
In a slightly less ideal case, I'll like see the thing for person and I'll immediately think Nin or Hito, which are both pronunciations depending on, this is being weird, depending on the uh, like what word it's being used in, it's working. Um, okay, let's go through my other notes. Oh yeah, this one is from YouTube. Again, you can pull this directly from Notion Mark. Again, it's great kind of, kind of practice. I'm gonna blur out the numbers, I guess. It's cool seeing everything green. Thanks for sticking around, you know, if you're on the video. What? Leave a comment down below. Would love to hear it. You know, up top there, it says dash dashboard, dash you, dash you bodo. And then I, you know, 4.8 is 4.8 man, 4.8 thousand watch hours. And I know whatever the kanji to the left are, stand for watch hours. I know the third kanji there means times. At least that's what Wani Kanye has taught me. The next one is chanadu. channel, channel, and then something with a possess with the possessive particle there no with north at the end but yeah another thing there um here's one so i listened to asmr there's some japanese asmr that's cool little japanese whispering i i know you can't actually learn anything while you're sleeping i just i mean sometimes i'll fall asleep to it not often but just to be clear i don't believe in that um but anyway so i learned the kanji for ear which is mimi uh and then there's left and right respectively in this screenshot here uh so that was cool i was like oh left ear one challenge this brings up is how i remember slash know the correct pronunciation for these things. As a new native English speaker, you might see the word miscellaneous and think miscellaneous. So I imagine it's somewhat similar, but um, as a native Japanese speaker, it'd be good. We did talk about some cool stuff in one of my linguistics classes, the same one I mentioned earlier about how there's really no future tense in general. Uh, well, Japanese doesn't have a future tense period, but a really cool example was kind of like, you know, I am going to school tomorrow. Let's pretend I have school tomorrow. It doesn't matter when you're watching this or, you know, the fact that it's Friday. I have school tomorrow. Uh, sorry, I am going to school tomorrow. I am going to school is a statement in the present tense. Tomorrow all of a sudden makes it present, but in, you know, in tomorrow. And as far as I know, Japanese future works similar to this idea. And this is one of the, the things I want to look up papers on, but you know, I could be wrong. One, you know, I will be going to school tomorrow is, I don't, I don't know enough to spout too much, but like I would be going to school tomorrow is a modality and I don't know how modalities are done in Japanese. So more to read later. Adobe Max conference coming up. There was a quote in a video that they had talent is something that can be earned. And I realized that overthinking the best way to learn a language will halt you immediately. And again, embodying this idea of finding what works for you. If I try to think about the best way of learning a language and sticking with that, I'm gonna kind of play myself, if you will. So I'm really hoping this month I can get like really close to this final iteration of learning a language. You know, Boon Pro and Wani Kani being these resources that drill in fundamentals. Taken's grammar guide introducing me to a fundamental with Boon Pro reviewing it, uh, forcing me to review it, and then you know, TV for ex and music for exposure and manga as a app applied study. These branches of learning, I think will accelerate my learning and learning about the linguistics, you know, how Japanese has future tense. I, you know, that's my own thing that I also help will you think will help learning, but that made no sense. I also think that will help me learn faster, if you will. As adults, we just need to make use of our cognitive processes as opposed to trying to look at redundant patterns and solely relying on immersion. And then lastly, uh, in French, there's a tu and vu, uh, distinction. If you're talking to someone who is highly respectable, you refer to them as vous. If you're talking to a friend, you refer to them as tu. There are a lot more distinctions going on behind the scenes here, uh, but I have internalized that, I believe. You know, there's, there is like a, you know, if it's God, vous, you know, if it's your boss, vous. But there, there are these subtle nuances. Oh, a lot of talking today, I guess. Uh, a lot of nuances with this kind of stuff. I think I'm not talking properly. I took the back off my chair again because my posture has gotten garbage as parkour is making me quickly realize. But anyway, anyway, anyway. Internalizing things like Japanese honorifics and these general rules are something I would like to focus on. Because when you internalize, uh, you don't need to remember anything. You create them all over again. That's kind of what language is, uh, to me at least. It's not something that we memorize or remember. We create language based on the rules we internalize. You know, that's generative grammar in a way, but yeah, so those are my reflections. Damn, this is gonna be another like 20, 25 minute log. I apologize, but honestly, full of good stuff. So my goals, this is where I cover goals for next month, uh, which will be, uh, Wani Kani has been daily without fail, if not three to four times, at least two uh, per, per day, which, you know, the more you review, the better, because then they don't stack up. I wanted to hit level six, but I only just hit level five, which means that in four weeks, I would like to be at level eight. So finishing level five, six, and seven. 
which is three levels, which is one below, in theory, the best possible outcome based on others who have done Wani Kani. And I think the key is A, doing, doing the reviews more and B, embodying the mnemonics for vocab more. Kanji and radicals are very straightforward for me. Uh, the mnemonics are very easy to remember, but the vocab, once it comes in, and words get different sounds, then it starts messing up the vocab and the kanji. So I got to really rely on those mnemonics more. I want to look for papers that investigate specifically Japanese particles. Now, because I haven't gotten to tense and I do want to look this up in the future, uh, let me restart that. Because I found that Boon Pro and Take Kim's Grammar Guide weren't doing the same thing, I found that it was hard to do, you know, both. Uh, it felt like they were doing two different things when in reality, they're doing the same thing, or at least they should be. Boon Pro is reiterating what I learned in Take Kim's Grammar Guide. So why not read papers that help me internalize what I am reading about? You know, last time was you look up Japanese paper on phonology and syntax, which is so broad, specifically Japanese particles, still broad, a little more relevant perhaps. And lastly is to finish the essential, finish the essential grammar section of the textbook. So. I am on page 57. Uh, that means I've gone through about 20 pages in the last two weeks. I got this about halfway through the, the four weeks of learning log. 75 by next learning log. Um, oh shoot, no, this is the start of basic grammar. Then I get into essential grammar. Cool, which is verbs and stems and whatever. So yeah, those are my goals. One hello, boom, boom pro. Yeah. So maintain boom pro streak. Wani Kani level eight. I kind of like that they don't, they don't have streaks because I mean it is rewarding in its own right. I haven't used apps on my phone at all. Maybe if I start to use Hey Lingo, that will again be um, fun, better, if you will, uh, simply because to, to learn phrases as opposed to you know Wani Kani's vocab words or you know alongside. Big props to these very specialized language learning tools. When I get to another language. I'm gonna have to find a different way. For example, Spanish, I could probably do it with Duolingo and Rosetta Stone um, and like Anki for memorizing words. I don't know, maybe that's a bold claim, but yeah. But yeah, that's it for today's learning log. Uh, don't worry about the mattress in the background. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed. Again, I'd love to hear your goals in the comments below, what you think about my learning journey. Is there something that helped you from this video or something that helped you learn Japanese or a language that you'd love to mention? I think I am definitely falling into the groove. It was nice entering blindly uh, in the summer. Looking back, it was nice to, you know, I'm glad that I learned to focus on writing and reading, uh, you know, hiragana and katakana. And I'm super glad someone told me about Wani Kani because it's the only reason I'm doing kanji, let's be real. Yeah, I just need to apply more to books. Uh, that's kind of the main thing I need to apply more to. And, you know, build up the foundational knowledge because once you have that finite array of basics, not really finite, but finite array of basics, uh, you know, you can learn the building blocks and then you can start to put together your own things. That's a whole other theory of knowledge that I have, but, and in building. But yeah, no more further rambling. Thank you so much. There will be a video this week. Upcoming, it's gonna be like a video on geocaching. I'm thinking of doing a video called Parkour New York City. I don't know. If you're watching this, I imagine you're a follower of the channel or whatever. Have a good one. I will see you in four weeks. Um, but most importantly, don't forget to stay awesome. See you then. He's got this. <laughs> What's up, we're live streaming. Like, subscribe, join. <laughs> I'm gonna put that at the end of the next Follow video. Follow my Patreon. <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe, fam! Leave a comment. Follow me on Twitch! Live streams every Tuesday. Also, we need money for the PO box. Yeah. I'm gonna have that clip exist on its own. Nice! nice.